that this project that we're going to be working on today is um, it's really special to me. I fell in first off. I fell in love with this napkin, this beautiful tree, this beautiful fall tree. And as I was looking at it and just kind of looking at all the different leaves and all the things, this is what we're going to be making today. Um, I decided to turn this project into a DIY decor kit. So what that means is you can actually purchase this project as a kit. Um, as I was looking at the leaves and just all the things, it, I just started thinking about counting my blessings, right? Um, we all have so many things to be thankful for. And it's a great time of year for us to remember. I even wore my shirt today, give thanks with a grateful heart, to have a grateful heart and to to count those blessings and even to make it you know kind of a tradition within your family um, um for everyone to say or or you know um as you gather together later in november for thanksgiving maybe say something that they're thankful for and so that's kind of how this canvas kit came around and was inspired um, at first, I was thinking I wanted it to be a little more whimsical, but, you know, sometimes the creative process just takes off on its own and it actually turned out so elegant. It is just beautiful, elegant, lots of gold accents. I'm going to I'm going to I'm so excited to share a few um, kind of antiquing accents with you today. Um, I think you're going to really like this. I absolutely adore this ribbon. Um <laughs> I love this ribbon. First off, I'm going to kind of show it to you here. Do you see how it's kind of frayed on both edges? It's kind of like a linen weave. It is gorgeous. But these polka dots, you guys, are velvet. They're velvet polka dots. So they're so cute. Okay. So let me tell you kind of how I envision you actually using this uh, beautiful canvas. Obviously, it will be a great addition to your fall decor, or it could be a great gift to give someone that you just want to show them and let them know that you're thankful for them. Maybe um, you want to give it to whoever's hosting um, Thanksgiving dinner this year or something like that. So I want to show you on the back. I did create a pocket. OK, there's a pocket on the back and all of these materials are in your kit, which I'll show you here in just a minute. So if you wanted to, you could put pictures of your blessings here in this pocket. You could have little tags out around that everybody could write what they're thankful for and put it in here and just kind of as a fun memory to go back and look at what people were thankful for for this year. That kind of thing. You could reuse, you know, this over and over again every single year. And so I really love the idea of having the pocket on it, especially um, again, if you want to, if you kind of want to create that tradition of, um, of um, um, memory keeping, um, just that act of everyone saying something that they're thankful for, you know, those kinds of things. So I just think it's really, really beautiful. This is what we're going to make today. So I'm going to jump right into it. Okay. Stephanie's already ordered a couple. Awesome, Stephanie. Thank you. Thank you times two. <laughs> um, you got your kit. Oh, I'll get my kit any minute you're watching for the post. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. Yes, we have already started shipping these. We do still have some available. So I did put a link in the description on this post. And then um, if you do decide you want to order a kit, and then also Kristen uh, will be on live with me today. Cheryl is away. Her One of her grandkids had to have um, surgery for um, what is it? Adenoids and tonsillectomy. <laughs> so Kristen McElroy is going to be here online with me. She'll be helping to answer questions and to post links for um, some of the things that I'm using. And it looks like there's Ashley too. Ashley's here as well. <laughs> all right. So let's jump into this kit. I want you to see what all you're going to get. It is $14, which I think we, we tried to keep it very, very budget friendly. Um, it's called Count Your Blessings, Count Your Blessings DIY Decor Kit. And let's, let me show you what all is going to be in here. The girls have it packaged all up so cute and so neat. So you're going to have a couple of pieces of paper here. This is going to be to do the back to cover up um, the, the back part of the canvas and to create your pocket. 
So I'm going to slide those over there so I don't get them messy. <laughs> You're going to have a chunky canvas. This is a chunky canvas. I love chunky canvases. Um, one of the main reasons I love them is they stand on their own. So anybody can just set them anywhere they want to, whether it's on a shelf, on a buffet, on the kitchen table, on a tear tray, on their desk, wherever they want it to be. And these look really adorable when you stack them. So uh, I have a candlestick here. I'm going to show you kind of the technique I used on this candlestick. And then we also have a new one in. This new one is really pretty because it's already pre-stained. It actually looks like this when you get it. Do you see how it's kind of thicker, broader? Really pretty. has the little jute on there that you can take on or leave off. But they just look really pretty um, with kind of a little pedestal base. Okay. Very, very cute. So you're going to have a chunky canvas. Six by six by one and a half, I believe it is. Okay. Chunky canvas. Um, you're going to have the beautiful, this beautiful tree napkin. And you're actually gonna, going to have multiple images of this. Um, you know, if you feel inclined to make some of these on your own, you can. Or you can do something else with your beautiful tree and napkin. I'm going to go ahead and cut one of these images. We just need one for the canvas. I always like for you to have at least one extra just in case we have a little oopsie or we need to patch something. So this tree is so pretty. Isn't that a gorgeous napkin? I absolutely love it. So you're going to have extras of this image and then you're going to have this wonderful little fall goodie bag. <laughs> this wonderful little fall goodie bag. Let me show you what I was going to be in it. All right. You're going to have an acorn, which we're going to transform. So you're going to have an acorn. You're going to have five of these wooden leaves, which we will also be transforming. Okay, these five little little leaves here, kind of a variety of styles. You're going to have four artificial leaves, two red and two orange. Okay, two red and two orange. And we also have a really have a really fun tip for you on how to dress up your artificial leaves. And then this is your kind of your little fiber bundle. So you have the beautiful ribbon with the velvet polka dots. So cute. Um, you're going to have another little gingham check ribbon and then some jute. Okay. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, so we're going to jump right in today. We're going to get started. Um, one thing I want to tell you about this particular project. Okay. I know the napkin is beautiful, Karen. I totally agree with you. It's so pretty. I just fell in love with it. So one thing I want to tell you today is that we're not actually using any paint. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> No paint today. So I want you to look at the difference. Look at the difference this we're going to make here. Look at this white, stark, very bright napkin. And then look at how we're going to make it look. Okay. I think you're going to really enjoy this transformation today. Okay. So I want uh, the doubles ha or have been shipped. I'm hoping, Belinda, that maybe they're going to arrive today. If not today, it'll be Monday. Okay. Yeah, no paint this time. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Yes, this is a chunky canvas. Kristen's telling you this one's thicker. It's not the thin canvas, it's the chunky. So it's six by six by one and a half, I believe. It's got the really nice solid wood frame in there. So it stands up really easily. Now, this napkin is going to be very easy to separate. It comes, uh, um, if you'll cut your square off first, really easy to separate. You can do kind of the little lick and stick method. You can put a little tiny drop of Mod Podge on your fingers if you need a little more stick them um, or even use washi tape, painter's tape, something like that. And it's only going to have one extra ply this time. Okay. So you're going to take that ply off. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put this tree onto our canvas. Now I want you to see this. There are these little bitty leaves here at the very bottom of this canvas, but we're not going to we're not going to worry about them. We're actually going to wind up sanding those off. So when we put the napkin down, I want this very top leaf to kind of be right at the tip edge. 
and that's going to cause us to pull this off. I would rather have all of this, the tree, than this little bit of leaves at the bottom. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Kristen's posting the link right now to the wood risers and the candlesticks. Oh my gosh, they're so pretty. Um, and it really does something to your, your projects when you elevate them. It just kind of takes them to a new level. Very, very pretty. Okay. All right. We're going to be using Mod Podge Matte today. Mod Podge Matte, when I'm applying napkin art, is my favorite when using a canvas. Okay. Um, so I'm going to pour just a little bit. I don't need too, too, too much in here. Whoops. Into my little tart tin here. And again, no paint today. No paint today. So I'm going to take a clean brush and I'm going to dip into my Mod Podge and just start applying it. Okay, I'm just going to apply it, um, a nice kind of healthy coat all over, not the sides. Don't worry about the sides. We really just need the top part of the canvas. Our ribbon is going to cover um, the sides of the canvas beautifully, so we don't have to worry about that. So I'm, I want you to put on what I consider a healthy coat. A healthy coat looks really nice and wet. You, you may have to hold it in the light just to make sure that you didn't miss any spots, you know, something like that. Um, and that looks really good. So now I'm going to take my napkin and I'm just going to kind of, kind of hold it up and drag it down. Make sure that we kind of get it somewhat centered. And my goal is to get this very top leaf on the front of the canvas. Okay, just like that. Okay, now um, I'm just going to kind of tap it in place and I'm going to actually use a plastic sheet. I want this to be a nice smooth um, finish on my uh, napkin here. So I'm going to put the plastic wrap on. I'm going to start kind of just taking my fingers in a circle here. And by the way, I use um, deli bakery sheets for this. And I have these, I get these from Amazon and they're loaded in my Amazon storefront. Okay. We finally started an Amazon storefront for all the things that I get there. Not really um, because I was interested in, I mean, you do get an affiliate commission, but mainly because it's just easy for me to send you there to find the things that I'm using. Okay. So you can go and look at the ones that I'm using there, but there are lots of different brands and different sizes available. And you may even have some plastic wrap in your kitchen that you could use. Okay. Thank you for sprinkling. Thank you. Maybe we should do a giveaway today. Anybody want to want a giveaway? Yeah, let's do a giveaway today. Okay, so I'm just smoothing across this. I didn't cut the napkin, right? Like I didn't cut around the edges. It's okay to just leave the napkin plies. That white background is just going to blend right in with the white background of our canvas. Okay. Yeah, we want to do a gift today. We want to do a prize. Okay, I'm good with that. Let me uh, let me set that prize drawing up. We'll do it through StreamYard today. Let me do that real quick here. Da, 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 da. Okay. Okay, I'm going to have it start collecting comments right now. Okay, great. Thank you for sprinkling. I do appreciate that. This is such a beautiful project, so I appreciate you sharing it with your crafty friends and family out there. All right, so we're going to lift this up. You're going to see that a lot of the Mod Podge kind of seeps up through the napkin. That is normal, and we actually want that. That's going to help. That's part of what helps to get the nice, smooth finish. And then we're going to dry this. Now, I'm going to use my heat tool for this, but if you wanted to, you could just you know, do something else, walk away from it for a little bit. If you don't have a heat tool or a heat gun, you could even use a blow dryer if you need to. This is really just to dry it, to speed up the crafting process. 
I'm kind of the world's most impatient crafter. I'll admit it. So I just want to make sure this is dry before I put a top coat on it. And I am going to do a top coat on it because I need to seal the napkin. We want to protect it. We also want to seal it because we're going to do all this lovely antiquing fun on it on top. All right, that feels pretty good and dry. Yes, the replays are available. And Karen, yeah, I, um, who was it? Joanne said it. Joanne, I agree. It's nice having the replays so that you guys can go back. Like if you do decide to order a kit today, you can go back. This video is going to be saved right here on my Facebook page and my video library. And um, there'll be a little tab you can go and click on. It just says all videos, I believe. And um, you can watch this replay as many times as you want to. Okay, just using a piece of sandpaper here to kind of get rid of these the edges. Got a little bit of Mod Podge on the edge here. This side. So because of how we position the napkin down, you'll have a little bit more to sand off on some sides than others. You can use a sanding block. I'm just using a little piece of sandpaper and even an emery file. It's not hard to sand these off because it is just that little bit of tissue, right? That little thin tissue. Um, Jan, this was not in the napkin bundle. This came um, after I had already made our selections for the fall bundle. So, um, but when I saw this one, I was just like, okay, I have to have this tree. And I really wanted to, like I said, I really, really wanted to make a DIY decor kit out of it. So now I'm going to go back to my Mod Podge, okay? Oh. Mod Podge mat here. And I'll just let you look. Look how pretty. See how pretty a finish? Using the plastic sheet, it just, gosh, it's just perfect. So we're going to do a quick, thin top coat. We need to protect the napkin. We also need to seal the napkin because of the... Um, antiquing that we're going to be doing on this. If we don't seal this napkin, that napkin is going to try to absorb all of that and it would just turn into um, a really big mess. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this was just used for this kit. Um, it was not in our um, napkin club bundle. And notice what I'm doing. I'm putting a little bit of Mod Podge here on the sides. I don't really have to do that, but I may do a little bit of antiquing around the edge just in case the edge shows just a little bit with when our ribbon goes on. So I just while I have it out, I'm just going to go ahead and do the whole thing. Got a little glooper there. It's going to look kind of milky. That's normal. Mod Podge will look kind of milky and then uh, we'll give it just uh, a few minutes and it will dry crystal clear. Not even a few minutes. It's not going to take hardly any time at all for this. Okay. So I can help it along. You like the little wooden leaves, Janet? That's awesome. Yeah, I did too. I felt like we needed some dimension on this canvas. And I just think they're so pretty. So I'm just going to kind of help this to dry a little bit here. In fact, you know what? We could work on our leaves while this dries. Let's do that. Let's do that. So I'm going to push this up a little bit. And let's go over here to our wooden leaves. So as you can see, there'll be a variety. They won't, they may, you know, you're going to, it's just, they're just fall leaves. <laughs> Okay, little fall wooden leaves, but we're going to take them up a notch and we're going to make them look extra, extra, extra beautiful. And how I'm going to do that, ladies, or I don't know if we have any guys watching, guys and gals, <laughs> I'm 
I'm going to be using my gold uh, Krylon pen. Okay. So this could be, um, um, it's, it's actually, I use my gold Krylon pen a lot in the fall and through the holidays. So trust me, it's worth the investment. It's beautiful. You're going to shake it up. I think you can hear, hear the little ball bearing in there. You're going to shake it up and then it's going to load just like a paint pen. So you're going to just push down. I'm just going to paper plate here, push down and it's going to load. Just show you how pretty. Oh, it's so pretty. Now there are other metallic paint pens out there on the market. Um, this one is, is a gold leafing pen. So it's a little more luminous. It actually is um, 18 karat gold, um, which is, you know, you'll see the difference. It's just really, really pretty. But if you do happen to already have like a gold metallic paint pen or a marker or something in your stash, then you could use that. Okay. Um, we have the Krylon pens available here. Um, I bet Kristen will probably post a link here in just a second. And I want you to watch as I, let's bring this down a little bit. All I'm going to do, you guys, is just paint over these. Now, because these are wooden leaves, you're going to see some of the kind of the, what do you want to call it, like striations in the wood. Just going to show you. And let me kind of hold, whoops, sorry. See if it'll focus. Look how pretty. Isn't that pretty? I'm not going to do the edges. Just going to basically kind of color or paint over the tops. Okay. It's going to be gorgeous. If you need to load more, then you just come back on your plate, and press down to get that flowing again. And we're going to make these beautiful beautiful golden leaves. There's another step we're going to do to them too, but let's at least get this part done while our Mod Podge is drying. Look at that. Oh, seriously, so pretty. And very easy to use. If some of you are in the napkin club, um, remember our workshop this past Tuesday where we were doing the stockings? This is the same pen that I used um, to add that gold edging around my stocking that I was working on. So pretty. I'm trying to get my, my little fingerprints covered up. Beautiful. Okay, I just got one more to do here. Originally, when I was doing this canvas, I was thinking that, you know, if you wanted to, you could even maybe write, um, if you have good handwriting or, or if you're a hand letterer, you could even write on these leaves different things that you're thankful for in your life. But after I got it done, I didn't, I didn't want to write on them. They were just so pretty. I didn't want to mess them up. <laughs> So I left them alone. Okay, so they're they're going to be a little wet. I'm just going to kind of put them to the side to let them dry. So I'm going to slide them over here. The other thing we're going to do is our acorn. Our acorn is going to be golden. And this is kind of fun. So no matter what kind of acorn you got um, in your kit, it's not going to matter. I'm going to do the top first. So, and I don't want the top to be full, fully covered. I'm just kind of going over the bumpy edges, kind of the bump, the embossed bumps on the acorns hat, his little topper. So they have a little bit of a gold reflection. You can see that. Okay. Isn't that pretty? So pretty. I'm going to have to set it down. There's no way to do this without getting a little bit of uh, gold on your fingers, but it's okay. You can use a baby wipe, clean it up. And then it actually does dry pretty quickly, especially um, if with us putting it on like this. So see the top? 
Isn't that gorgeous? So now I'm going to actually make this part gold. Look at that. We want a very special acorn on our Count Your Blessings canvas. So we're making a golden acorn. <laughs> very pretty. Once that paint starts flowing, it just, gosh, it's great. So you can use your Krylon markers on pretty much anything, any kind of surface, whether it's glass, metal, plastic, paper. I use it in my paper crafting too. Paper mache, canvas, fabric, all the things. Isn't that so pretty? There it is, my golden acorn. Isn't that great? <laughs> so we have golden leaves and we have a golden acorn. I'm going to scoot those over here. And I think if I just pop our um, canvas with just a little more heat, we're going to be ready to go for the next step. You thought about putting names on the leaves? See, Nikki, I thought the same thing. You could do names or you could do words like, you know, um, counting your blessings. I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful for um, my job. I'm thankful for my church. You know, it could be different things like that. But like I said, I, I chickened out after I got the canvas together because it was just so pretty. I didn't want to, I didn't want to mess it up. So I thought, well, I'm going to put the pocket on the back and that way we can put our blessings back there. <laughs> okay. I think we are good and dry. Do just a little bit around the edges here. Oops. Got a gold, got a gold on my fingers. Okay. We are good to go. All right, so the next step, what we're going to be using for this next step, you're going to want some baby wipes for. So go ahead and get out maybe a couple of baby wipes. Okay, a couple of baby wipes. Um, as far as crafting goes, when I'm using baby wipes, I like to make sure whatever baby wipes I'm using, they're alcohol free. Um, and um, sometimes... Like I made a mistake when I got these, okay? And I'll tell you why. It was a mistake. I, I, it happens sometimes, right? If you get the baby wipes that are quilted, sometimes the quilted baby wipes will leave little fibers, little fibers on your projects. So I usually try not to get the quilted ones. It's not like the end of the world. When they dry, they just kind of brush off. But, um, but I generally try to get just the plain, cheap, no alcohol, not quilted baby wipes for crafting. <laughs> okay, so we're going to be using this wonderful product that's called Liquid Antiquing Wax. All right, it is by Folk Art Home Decor. It is a liquid antiquing wax. It actually hardens just like a paste wax would, but oh my gosh, it is so much easier to use. Okay, so much easier to use. So I'm going to, uh, you're not going to need a lot for this. So I'm just kind of moving this around so that I can have some in the lid. You're really not going to need much for this part of the process. Um, and I'm going to grab a brush here, another brush to use. So I want to reiterate just one more time. Okay, when... You want to antique something. And again, let's look at the difference. Okay, look at the difference. Stark white. It's very stark color, right? And very much more kind of antiqued and, and pretty and all the things, right? So when you can actually do this to any type of napkin art. There are times when you get some napkin art and it just feels so stark or so bright and there's two actually two choices you can do you could either whitewash something so if you're just trying to mute the color you could actually do a little whitewash we'll do that on a tech on a, a craft and chat um coming up a little later um that's a christmas project okay 
Um, and then we can also antique something to give it a little bit more um, um, depth, warmth, um, all of those things. Okay. Now this antiquing wax, once you get a jar of it, it's going to last you such a long time because a little goes a very, very long way. Okay. Now we have a coat of Mod Podge dried on top of our napkin. If we didn't, okay, if we forgot to put a top coat on, then our napkin, the paper part of our napkin would be exposed. And the minute I put this on, that napkin is going to try to just totally absorb this stuff and I can't move it around. I want to move the antiquing wax around. And that's what I'm going to do with the baby wipe because I don't want it to be dark everywhere, right? Like I want to manipulate it. I want to move it around. Okay. Um, this particular kit, this particular kit features this tree napkin. Um, Kim, if we, when we're done selling all of the kits, if we have, whatever half napkins we have left, I'm sure we'll make them available. Okay. I'm not sure how many we'll have left. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to dip into the antiquing wax. All right. And don't freak out. All right. Everybody just say it out loud or, or say it in your head. I won't freak out. <laughs> okay. Because when we first put it on, it's kind of like, what is she doing? Oh my gosh. Just a little bit. What is she doing? Oh my goodness. This is going to look horrible. Look at that. Ah, don't freak out. Okay. Don't freak out because now I'm going to take this baby wipe, right? I'm going to take this baby wipe and I'm going to kind of start washing. Now this does not mean washing my baseboards kind of washing. Don't scrub it. All right. We're just going to kind of do a gentle wash. You can kind of pull the antiquing around to the edges. Okay, we're just kind of a gentle wash. We're going to let it just kind of grab wherever we want it to grab. All right, you see that? Now, look at my baby wipe. There's a ton of antiquing wax on this. If I don't re if I don't recrumple my baby wipe, then I'm just moving the wax around. So I need to kind of rearrange my wipe to a clean area. And now watch, I can go back over the tree. So if you want the tree to be, to not be so antiqued, do you see what I mean? We can come back in and kind of push that antiquing out to the edges. We still have another step. So there'll be another step here shortly. All right. So if you wanted to, you could literally take off as much as you want. All right. You can take off as much as you want. This is a little more than I want. <laughs> I want to have a little bit. I want to have a little bit uh, more here, but I just wanted you to see it's very easy to manipulate. So again, I'm going to go to a clean part of my baby wipe, right? And then just kind of wipe away. I kind of like that circular motion. It's just pretty on the background of the canvas. We have kind of some swirls happening. I'll hold it up close here in a second so that you can see it better. And then with what's on the edges here, you can literally just come in and kind of uh, wipe the sides of your canvas so it's not so stark white in case some of that shows. I'm going to put a little bit more with our ribbon. It doesn't have to be much. Anybody freaking out? <laughs> Sure, it's this. It's the antiquing wax. It actually says antique wax. Okay, it is fabulous. Fabulous, fabulous. All right. I'm just kind of rearranging my baby wipe again. We're not done. And again, it's, it's up to you kind of how much you want to leave around the edges. But now our tree isn't so stark. 
Okay, there is another step um, because sometimes it's fun to um, add in kind of another color. I'm just dry brushing right now. I'm kind of dry brushing in a little bit of the antiquing on the edges, the corners here. Kind of swipe it forward. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to dry it. Yes, the antiquing like it freaks people out, but it looks so good. Just wait. Just wait. You're going to really, really love how this is going to turn out. We have another step that we're going to add. So the first thing was just getting some um, some color to this piece, right? We wanted to warm it up. We didn't want it to be solid white. I wanted the colors to be more warm and not so much like a bright orange, but now it's more of kind of a, a, a rustic orange, right? Like that kind of thing. And then we're going to dry this. Now this wax, you don't have to reseal it. It actually hardens. It's going to harden itself and protect your canvas over the next uh, few hours. I just want to make sure that it's pretty much dry. I think that it is. And then the extra baby wipe is to clean your hands. <laughs> it's going to get on your hands. There's no way around it. You love using it? Yes, I do too. So Teresa and Dorothy agree with me. Yes, it's so fun. It, it is a little bit like kind of nerve wracking, but here's the deal. As long as you don't let it dry, you could literally could wipe, just wash everything off if you don't like it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's really fun. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add something else to add a little warmth and charm to our uh, beautiful Count Your Blessings tree canvas, okay? And it's going to be chalk ink. Now, there are lots of different types of chalk inks. Um, I really love the powder puff chalk inks. Um, they are great, and here's why I love them, okay? First off, they're chalk-based. They look great on anything I ever use them on. So y'all know that I, I'm a multi, I'm, I'm a cereal crafter, okay? <laughs> I'm a multi-purpose maker. I'm a cereal crafter. I do paper crafting. I do all kinds, you know, I don't just do napkin art. I do all kinds of things. And I love these chalk inks because they cross over into everything that I do. I can use them in my paper crafts. I can use them in my Bible journaling. I can definitely use them in any of my decor uh, things that I make, napkin art, all those things. You can even use them um, with fabric. Okay. They're a soft, more chalk, chalk based. So they're not so liquidy. All right. Now I want you to, you need a brown, basically. You need a brown. Um, I'm going to, Kristen, you want to list off some of the browns that are be good for this? Um, chocolate malt, mocha mama, uh, amaretto, oak tree, um, a brown. Okay. A brown. So here's what I'm going to do. This is all dry now. Okay. Let me kind of hold it up here so you can see. Isn't that so pretty? Do you see how it kind of, some of, some of the antiquing wax just kind of gets into the texture of the canvas? Very, very pretty. All right. So I'm going to actually apply this directly from the ink pad. Okay. Directly from the ink pad. If you don't want to do that, you can get like a little makeup foam sponge. Some of you have little daubers that have little foam um, or sponge, you know, on the end of it. Um, and I'm going to take this and I'm going to go heavily around the corners. Really more so just the corners. I'm not going to go over the tree part, just the corners. We're going to warm up these kind of, we want the tree to kind of be highlighted and we're going to warm this up. You can use a little bit of it around the edges right here, the corners. Again, we're going to have our ribbons going to cover all that up, but it's nice to have just a little bit in case that edge doesn't get completely covered up. And then again, I love this because if I do get too much, 
I can come in and I can kind of manipulate it. I can pull some, I can kind of pounce at it. I can kind of pull it, but do you see how I'm trying to kind of add this little, we have like a highlight around this tree, almost a glow, right? It almost looks like a glow around the tree. So um, again, lots of different um, chalk inks would work great for this. And you just kind of keep adding them however much to whatever thickness that you want to add. Okay. And I think it looks great. So now my tree has kind of this glow about it. Okay. So chalk ink, um, because we have the Mod Podge on it, right? We sealed it with Mod Podge, a light coat of, of matte Mod Podge. Um, we did our antiquing wax, which also is going to create a seal. And now we put the chalking on. So this is important. You are going to want to take like your heat tool. Um, if you have a, um, a heat gun, a heat tool, something like this. I like to heat set the chalk ink. So I'm just going to take this around and just kind of let the heat sit kind of right on the chalk ink. You may even notice that it, it almost adds a little more luster when you add the heat to it. And basically what we're doing is we're kind of heat setting it into the wax and the Mod Podge. Okay. It is so pretty. It almost looks like stone. It almost looks like we've taken that white canvas, that stark white canvas, and now it almost looks like a tile, like a stone tile. Okay. Very, very pretty and very warm. I think it's gorgeous. And that's all. That's all you have to do. And now as that um, uh, continues to cure, cure is the hardening process. So a project can be dry, but curing takes a little bit more time, um, depending on the thickness of what you put on. I think for this one, it'll be completely cured in just maybe a couple of hours. It's not going to take long at all for this to harden up. Okay. Isn't that great? <laughs> The ink pads in these, that's the other thing about these chalk inks. We have all different colors, Oop. but uh, their, their pad is made out of the layers of cheesecloth. So it's a little different and they just ink beautifully. They just, they're just beautiful. They ink beautifully. Okay. So we're going to use the ink pads again, right quick. Um, oh. We're actually going to use them on the gold leaves. So if I put these gold leaves down, I just want you to see, I'm just going to put a few on here. Do you see how they are like gold? <laughs> they are like, woo, I am gold. Um, so I'm going to take my chalk ink, okay? And I'm going to just do a little bit of chalking around the edges. Not the top, just the edges. Do you see that? Just a little around the edges. And that just helps to kind of, um, I don't know, it just, again, helps to kind of warm up that gold to where it's not just like screaming gold in your face. And then we're going to glue these on wherever we want, but I'm going to do that at the very end. So again, it's just, they're so nice that you can just chalk the edges. Do you see how soft, if you were using a different type of, of ink, like a regular ink pad, ink, those ink pads are really wet. So they, I don't know, they're just, they're not as easy to blend. Maybe that's the right. Okay. These ink pads are uh, from Quick Quotes. They're chalk inks, powder puff chalk inks. We sell a ton of colors here. <laughs> because I use them a lot. Okay. So Kristen just posted a link for you, um, Sherry and let's see, Cindy and Rhonda, everybody that needs it. Okay. So pretty, right? All right. So we're going to move these off Let me make sure my glue gun's on. Now I'm going to show you something else that I'm going to consider optional for this project. Um, and it's going to be doing some pen work. And the reason I'm going to say that is because in the beginning, when I first did this canvas, I did some pen work on some of the leaves. I just want to show you, look, no pen work, pen work, 
Okay. I did more pen work than I needed to because a lot of it got covered up by my gold leaves. So I would say if you're going to do pen work to this, save it for the very end. Save it for the very end after we glue on all of these leaves and whatever direction they're going to be going and do it after that. And then if you want to come in and add some pen work around some of the leaves, you can. Okay, so you'll see me do that. We'll do that at the end. I just most of the mo, usually in the natural order of the napkin art process, normally I'd be doing pen work right now. But I realized I really wasted a lot of time <laughs> because I covered up so much of it. Okay, all right. So we're going to move on to the ribbon process next. All right. So you're going to have a little piece of check ribbon that's going to be for the back. You're going to have some jute and you're going to have this awesome ribbon that I just fell in love with. We ordered this from our distributor. It is so cute. It is kind of got a, um, I love the texture on the edges and the polka dots are velvet. It's just so cute. <laughs> okay. So we're going to go ahead and put this on um now actually should we put the yeah let's just go ahead and do this part now so i'm going to turn my canvas upside down and i want you to take your scissors we're going to cut this in just kind of st straight across um just using hot glue for this let me raise this up a bit so i'm going to start off whoops i need another glue stick I'm going to start off with just kind of a line and then kind of a, mm, I'm going to call it drag and drizzle. So I'm kind of dragging the hot glue, literally dragging the tip of my glue gun down. So that way the glue isn't super thick. And then this ribbon is going to fit exactly. It's one and a half inches as well. And we're going to go around every edge here. So I put kind of a bigger bead on the ends and then just kind of drag and drizzle the sides in the middle. You love the ribbon choice? Thank you. Yeah, we've started um, ordering from some distributors because of the amount of kits that we create and the amount of projects that we, you know, we make, um, we need larger spools. And I just feel like some of the ones out at the craft stores are just the same. Every time I go, they're the same, right? <laughs> so I'm going to try to bring you guys some really unique, beautiful ribbons and things in our kits. This is definitely one of them. Um, make sure your hands are clean at this stage of the game. <laughs> I think mine are clean enough. I'm going to come in and just cut that. This is a really nice kind of a, 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 it's got a good body to it. And then you don't have to worry about it like fraying or anything. And I'm just going to put a tiny little bit of glue kind of right in there just to seal that. Perfect. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and turn this over on the back. And I'm going to introduce you to another crafty friend of mine that I love to use, and it's called double sided tape. This is a double sided tape by, um, it's called, we call it score tape, S C O R T A P E, score tape. This is a, a quarter inch width. And it is fabulous. It is fabulous for um, putting the paper to the back of the canvas. It just works great. Now I want to show you this. You have been given a six inch, six by six inch square of um, brown cardstock. It's going to be just a hair too big, just a hair too big. So if you have a paper, a trimmer, or you have um, 
even just your scissors. I'm literally just taking off, I don't know, maybe even an eighth of an inch. We just need it to be just a hair smaller. Okay, just a hair smaller. All right, to put this on the back. You can see, just tiny, not much at all. And then let me show you this too, because again, I like to use my ink pads on paper as well. So you have a polka dot side that you could use. You have a plaid side. I'm going to use the plaid side. So if you are going to, if you are getting some chalk ink, go ahead and ink your pocket. This looks really pretty. And once you start inking paper, your paper crafts, like you can't stop. <laughs> Everything looks naked without it. If you don't keep adding ink to your papers and stuff. So I'm going to slide that out of the way for just a second. This is a nice uh, cardstock. And I'm going to start putting down my tape. This is, like I said, it's a double-sided tape. It is terrible. Not meaning that it's awful. Meaning that I can tear it with my fingers. I like that too. Super strong. And we just need it right to the edges here. Okay, right to the edges. I usually take my fingers along it before I take the backing off and just kind of uh, burnish it. Just make sure it's really good and stuck down. And then we're going to remove the film. Great way to just kind of make the back of your project look nice. Um, sometimes we use this as a shadow box and we'll decorate the back. But for this purpose of this canvas, in counting our blessings and all of those things. And we're just going to kind of lay it right into, right onto the back of the canvas. And then just burnish it down with your fingers. This, what you're seeing right here, is the ribbon. Okay, here's our ribbon. And then don't forget, when you go to put the pocket on, <laughs> I'm not saying this out of personal experience or anything. If you want something to be a pocket, don't put tape on all four sides. Sometimes I get in a hurry with my crafting and I'm like, oh, darn it. Closed it up. So we want to leave the top edge open. Again, I'm just going to kind of burnish this down. I just think it's easier to put this on. You could even put this on before you put on the ribbon if you want. Um, I, I think it's just easier to do before we decorate the rest of the canvas. And then make sure that your tree, okay, so like my tree is right side up. I'm going to flip it over so that my pocket is in the right position. And as I mentioned, you could cut, these are just little shipping tags, but you could cut up some paper. You could put photos on tags if you want to. Um, you could have everybody write what they're thankful for. Um, so I think tags, um, any little journaling that you want to add, um, photos, anything could be fun back there. Okay. Great for gift card frames. Yes. And we have some. We have some Christmas kits already made up um, that are perfect. We call them our gift canvas, gift canvas kits. <laughs> and they are fabulous. And they're all Christmassy. They're great for uh, a kind of a creative way to give a gift card or a sentiment or a small treat or, you know, anything like that. All right, let's go ahead and make our bow. And you're going to need your jute. Set this up right here and the remainder of your ribbon. Okay, the remainder of your ribbon here. We're going to make a super easy bow. I love making this type of bow for canvases. Um, it's just really pretty. And especially with this particular ribbon, it's going to look great because this ribbon holds its shape so well. So what we're going to do is we're going to create um, a tribute ribbon. Do you see how that looks like a tribute ribbon? See how it kind of goes up and around, right? So when you're creating a bow like this, that this part right down here become the tails of the bow. 
this crisscross where the intersection is becomes the center of the bow. Okay. So that can kind of help you decide, um, you know, um, you know, how big the bow is going to be, that kind of thing. Okay. So I'm going to take my fingers right here at the tip top of this loop, right, right up here at the center. And I'm just going to bring it back behind this intersection. Okay. It's behind the intersection. And then I'm just literally going to just kind of scrunch it all up. And we wind up with a really pretty bow. Okay. Really pretty bow. Let's do it again. This is a great bow for gift packaging. It's just so easy, especially when it's a wide, wider ribbon. Okay, so I have my little crisscross here. These are going to be my tails. Here's the, the intersections, the middle of my bow. I'm going to take the center and I'm going to push it back underneath the intersection and just scrunch it up. Now, this is going to be your best friend if you have a clothespin. If you have a clothespin, just come put your clothespin around all of it. We're going to lay it down. We're going to take the jute. Even up your tails and we're going to start to tie it, but not tie it all the way. We're going to, now we're going to take off the clothespin and move our jute right into the center of the bow. Center ish as close as you can get. And then we're going to tie it off in a double knot. And we have a lovely bow. We have a lovely, lovely bow. I'm going to make my bow have a flag end um, tails, which means I'm going to go right up the center of my bow here, okay, and do a slit. And then I'm going to cut from the bottom corner to the top of the slit. And again, the bottom corner to the top of the slit. I'm going to do the same thing over here, except for this one's a little longer. So I'm going to cut off a little bit of it. Same thing, right? Make a, make a little slit at the center, corner to the top of the slit, corner to the top of the slit. It's going to look awesome. Okay, now next thing, we're going to use some hot glue. It's the only bow you can make, Janet. You know what, Janet, if this is the only bow you can make, then you're set, okay? Because it is a beautiful bow. <laughs> We'll work on some other bow techniques as we approach the holidays here. So I'm going to put kind of a, a nice little blob, kind of a line of hot glue right there. And when I lay this down, I'm not going to lay the, the, the bow down flat. I'm going to lay the bow down at an angle. Okay. I'm laying the bow down kind of at an angle so that it's actually facing me. All right. I want it to be facing me. Pop, pop, pop. Stick your fingers in there because some glue can catch the bottoms of those loops. So it is actually more so facing you. Okay. Isn't that pretty? Pretty, pretty, pretty. We're going to take this and just tie this into just a little bow. Nothing special, nothing fancy. You can decide how big you want the loops to be. Remember, um, we actually are going to put that golden acorn in here. So make your loops kind of big or medium size. Just don't make them too small. I put a little knot in the end of the tail. Same over here. And I'm just going to unravel that. Okay, now we're going to turn it around. We're going to look at the back. Okay, we're going to be doing something back here as well. But I want to show you, remember I told you I was going to show you a really kind of a fun technique to do to dress up your artificial leaves. All right, are you ready for it? So I'm going to grab the red and the orange leaves from my kit. You should have two red and two orange. Sometimes they stick together. So make sure you kind of um, smush your fingers together. Um, and separate them. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do, we'll do a red one first. I'm going back to the gold pin, to the gold Krylon pin. <laughs> it is a really great way to make a bow gel. Yes. 
Yes, Carol, these, this type of bow is great for these canvases because it lifts up and it's just good. It's a great type of bow for any, any bow that's pretty thick because you can't just make a normal bow because then the knot gets real bulky, you know, so it's great for that. So I have my little paper plate here. Um, I've shaken this. I'm going to press it down to make sure I've got the, got the um, beautiful gold uh, running and I'm going to actually go um, and do all of my edges. This does not have to be perfect by any means. So we're gold leafing, basically. We're adding this gold leafing metallic, beautiful, 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 around all the edges. Okay, let me show that to you. Look how pretty that is. <laughs> Oh, it's so pretty. Yes, please sprinkle this video out to your social media friends and family, crafty friends and family. And like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's actually going to look kind of sheer um, because these artificial leaves generally are not very thick. So pretty. See how it kind of goes through the back a little bit. And then I decided to go ahead and just kind of come down the synth, the, I don't know, what do you call it? The veins. And it's up to you how much you want to do. You don't have to do too much here. If you want to add a few gold veins, you can. Okay. So pretty. Um, all right. I'm going to do this faster on this one because I've got to do four leaves. Just imagine even doing this with Christmas with like holly leaves to have them have the gold edge. Oh, I think that would be so pretty. And this is something easy to do. These are, these are not expensive leaves. And it's just kind of a nice a way to kind of dress them up, right? Just dressing them up a bit. Make sure you have something underneath you. Like I'm doing mine on the, a paper plate here. Because um, it does kind of come through. You can see how it kind of comes through the leaf. Not pretty. Okay, so we have our red leaves done. Let's do our orange leaves. Not going to see quite as much contrast on the orange leaf, but it's still really pretty. So you can see all these elegant touches to this beautiful DIY decor kit. All by adding these gold accents antiquing, giving it warmth. It's just, it's just so beautiful. That's how it looks on the orange. Okay. We're going to do one more. Do we like it? It's so pretty, you guys. This is something you could do to maybe some of your fall leaves that you have right now, even in arrangements. Um, you don't even have to do it to all of them. You could just maybe hand pick a few, go to tip them. And it just kind of could refresh maybe an arrangement you already have. Pretty on a wreath. Centerpiece in the table. Anything like that. All right, we're almost done. Okay. All done. Clean my fingers again. <laughs> All 
I do. I yeah, you'll use I I'll use this gold crown pin a lot, especially fall and holiday for sure. Fall and Christmas. Okay, so now we're gonna do something else to these leaves um, because we're gonna use them up in the top of the canvas with the bow. So I'm gonna take my glue gun here, okay? And I'm gonna put just kind of a line of glue right here across the top, okay? Little line of glue, and I'm gonna wait a second. I'm gonna wait a second because I don't wanna burn myself it's okay. The, the hot glue and silk or artificial leaves, they actually really like each other. They play nicely. So once I've waited a second, so the heat is kind of gone, I'm going to just kind of smush or pleat this up and hang on. It's one of those things. I just have to kind of do it and then show you. Okay. So what this is going to do is this is going to make our leaf not flat anymore. Okay. It's going to make it not flat. I'll kind of show you the back. Um, we're just kind of, you know, I don't know how's the right way to say this again, just kind of a line over the top. Wait a minute or a second, not a whole minute. <laughs> you don't have to wait a whole minute. We're just going to let the heat kind of get, you know, off the hot glue and then just kind of just back forth, back forth. Just kind of squish that part together. Hold it until it's set and it's just going to give our leaves a little more you know movement not so flat They don't have to look super pretty. They're going to look great in the bow. And especially because we've added these little gold accents on here, it's going to look especially nice. Yes. So just kind of in, back, in, just kind of, I don't know exactly how to describe what I'm doing there. Just kind of folding, <laughs> folding and pin, pin, pinching it up. Okay. Yeah, it really does change them, doesn't it? All right. Let's go to our bow now. All right. I'm going to take a red and an orange. These are going to be the first ones that I'm going to put in. Okay. I'm going to put my hot glue on this side. And I'm going to put some hot glue on this side of that little, the stuff that we kind of pinched up. Okay. I'm going to lift up the bow and I'm going to kind of put it between the bow and the canvas. That makes sense. I'll show you kind of how that looks. And here's how it looks here. So it's kind of underneath the bow, the, the loop of the bow. We're going to do red on that side. We're going to do orange. On this side, I'm lifting this up and just kind of squeezing in in there and then just pushing down kind of this part of the, see where my finger is? I'm pushing down my finger kind of right there. And so these two leaves are going to just kind of be shooting off of underneath the loops of the bow. Okay. Really pretty. Now I'm going to take the opposite color. I'm going to go over here with the orange. And again, my glue is kind of, it's, I'm putting the glue kind of on the sides of what I pinched up. Let's see if I can hold this where you can see it well enough. This one is going to be kind of on, again, underneath the loop, but at the back. Okay. Let's look at it from the back. And honestly, you could put your you could put these on here any way that you want to. So again, I'm lifting up the bow. And I'm going to kind of squish that down. 
So these are kind of here off of the back. So do you see we have red, orange, red, orange. So our colors are kind of lifted around. Looks really pretty. I'm going to turn this over to the back so you can see off of the back here. Now this is where this ribbon is going to go. Okay. Now you've got quite a bit of this ribbon. We gave you quite a bit. I'm going to show you a couple different things that you can do with it. If you wanted to, I think I used all my jute. If you wanted to, you could create like a double bow. I'm just going to kind of show you a double bow to go right up here, kind of in between those two leaves. Or you could do a single bow up here and put maybe a little strip of this on your pocket. So I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to start off with a regular bow. Make sure I have enough for this. Mm. Okay, if I want to put this here, let me see if that gives me enough to make my bow. Yeah, I think it does. Okay, so I'll cut that piece off first. That's wiser. Just a regular bow like you tie your shoes. Nothing too fancy. About this, I got mine's a little bit off. Just make the tails kind of match. And then this bow is going to kind of go right in here. Do you see this little gap right here? There's kind of a little gap right there between those leaves. I'm going to pull my loops together and I'm just going to stick the knot of my bow in that gap and then just push it down till it holds. That way it looks pretty from the back too. Okay, we want it to look pretty from the back also, especially since we may be putting photos or pictures or things like that in here. And then let me show you how I do my ribbon when I'm doing paper crafts, okay? When I'm doing paper crafts, I love score tape for ribbon. So I'm going to lay this down right along the top edge of my pocket. Sorry, I got glue. I got little glue hairs on my fingers. <laughs> and I'm going to peel this off. And I'm going to lay my ribbon right down into it. And now I have a little ribbon edge on my pocket. See how cute that is? So we really kind of dressed up the back. Isn't that fun? I love it. I don't think I have enough right now to sell the yellow polka dot ribbon by the yard. Again, we'll have to see when we when um, the kits are all sold. We'll see kind of what we have left. But I really like that. Now we're not done. <laughs> We're getting there. Look how pretty, right? It looks pretty from here. It looks pretty from here. That gold on our leaves looks so good. So now let's go ahead and put down our golden acorn, right? Our golden acorn. And I like acorns to kind of, uh, I'm going to put my glue actually on the acorn, I think. I like acorns to sit kind of in an angle. So it looks like they've just kind of fallen so let me hold this here for just a second. There's our golden acorn right in the center of the bow. Just absolutely gorgeous. Now, the other thing that I like to do sometimes with my pieces is when you have a bow, sometimes the tails don't go right where you want them to go. <laughs> oh, you bought two more kits. That's awesome, Kimberly. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. So if that's the case with you, and it kind of is here too, I'm going to just put down a little dot of hot glue, you know, not much at all. And I'm going to take part of this bow, just the tail, and I'm going to stick that down because I don't want it, I want it to still look like it's free flowing. I didn't stick it all down, but I also want, I don't want it covering up too much of my tree. So just a couple little dots 
And it looks, just looks great. And now all I have left to do is decide where these leaves are going to go. So I would just kind of uh, play around with them, move them around. Um, and they can go every which direction. I'm just going to put them on with hot glue. Wherever you want. And then, like I said, if, if you want to be brave enough to ride on yours, you can. <laughs> I chickened out and didn't ride on mine because now I have the pocket on the back. So here is our canvas. Isn't it gorgeous, you guys? It's so pretty. And now it's all decorated on the back, too. Yes, order your kits now. It's the perfect time. Get the, these um, fall projects done. That way they're ready to put out. You can enjoy them. Um, I just think this one turned out beautifully. And then let me tell you about the candlesticks, okay? So this was just a plain candlestick. I actually used no paint. I used my wax on it. I painted the whole thing out with wax and then I took my baby wipe and I wiped it away. So I wiped it away from the areas I wanted it to look more natural. And then I came in with my gold pen. Do you see that? I came in with my gold pen and went around a few of the little curves and the accents here. And uh, yeah, I th just think it looks gorgeous. So these having, this is separate from the kit. We leave these separate because not everybody wants them. You can decide if you want to get one or not, but super easy to make these look really fantastic. Okay. And then this is the one that we just got in. We just got this one in so I could do a little bit of gold accents on, on this one too. The reason I love this one is because it's broader. It's broader. It's not as tall, but it's broader. And that actually looks kind of neat because it almost looks like the tree coming down, right? The tree trunk is dark and this is dark. Um, this is just tied on here. You don't have to keep that on. It's just, just on there in case you want it. But doesn't that look great? It looks good with that dark base too. Okay. So that's just to give you a couple of different options. I really love how this turned out. Thank you.